Hello, and welcome to the AFM Introduction and Background. I think it's important that we first look at all the little components and layouts of our equipment before we look at the real life versions of them so that we know exactly what we're talking about with regards to terminology and whatnot. So the diagram on the screen is what we generally refer to as a tip. Now, this isn't exactly accurate because the entire thing is not the tip, but it just seems to be easier when we talk about this to refer to one of these units as a tip. Now, the substrate is also sometimes called the chip, so you might hear that from some people. But uh, again, this is what some people will also call the body of the tip, but generally referred to as the whole, the whole thing is the tip. Now, off the end of the tip, we have the cantilever. There's two examples shown here. One of them has this triangular cantilever, and the other one has more of what you would think of as like a diving board cantilever. And then suspended off the end of the cantilever is the tip. Now the tip is actually very, very small at the end. Uh, the, the tips that I use in this video or in the next video are eight nanometers at the very, very end. And the whole unit is actually etched from a single uh, a single wafer of silicon or silicon nitride. So this whole thing is, is one contiguous piece. And then you'll also see sometimes they'll talk about the reflex coating or the reflective coating, and that's done on the backside of the cantilever. So that's to help the laser reflect off of the cantilever better. Now, speaking of the laser, this leads us into the actual setup of the uh, scanning portion of the instrument. So a laser is bounced off the back of the cantilever and you wanna try and position that laser directly over where the tip is because you could position it anywhere along the length of the cantilever, but over the end where the tip is actually located will give you the best sensitivity for deflections. And so you can see the tip on the screen has the laser re reflected off the back and it's going up to the photo detector. Okay, the photo detector that we have on ours is a four quadrant detector as seen in the top left. And upon starting this analysis, we will center the laser on all four quadrants uh, in the very center so that any deflection the laser has, we can measure it, we'll have high sensitivity. Now, you can imagine that as we move this probe across this uneven surface, when the probe is deflected, we'll be able to detect that on the photo detector. Okay, so the laser will move when the probe is deflected. And when that happens, there's this feedback loop that will change the position of the probe in the Z direction. And we'll talk about this more in detail in a second. Now, this is the basic operation. We'll scan back and forth in the X and Y direction and then the probe will deflect and we will get a topographical image of the surface. Okay, now this is a very simplified version. There's a lot of more complicated things happening in the background. And uh, one of them is the feedback loop that we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna use this very simplified analogy to try and describe the feedback loop and hopefully this will make it easier to understand. So imagine that you have a hot air balloon that is going over some terrain and their goal is to photograph the terrain as they move and take, uh, they need to take these photographs from an altitude of 100 meters in order for everything to stitch together correctly. Now, there are multiple ways that they could attempt to do this, but the end result is that they need to control the the burner which creates the hot air and raises the balloon up or they need to uh, turn off the burner to to let the balloon drop in order to maintain this constant altitude so you can think of this single direction as say a scan in the x direction and the height off the surface is the z direction of our probe now in this example they're going to use a range finder and if the altitude varies from their set point, then they will 
respond accordingly. So if the altitude is too high, then they're going to turn the burners off and allow the balloon to slowly drift downward. If the altitude is too low, they're going to turn the burners on and cause the balloon to lift up. Now in this analogy, the set point of 100 meters is the same as the set point of the amplitude of the oscillation of our tip. So if the amplitude is dampened, that means that we've run into something at a higher z position and therefore we need to raise it up. If we've run if we have our amplitude get larger, then that means we've run into a z position that is lower than the current one and we need to move our z position down. And if we iterate this the entire scan, then we can get a Z profile for a single direction, say the X direction. And then all we need to do is raster back and forth to complete the Y direction. This is the basic operation, the basic idea around the operation of the feedback loop that causes us to be able to get our topographical images. In this video, we are going to talk about the basic layout of our AFM and what each component contributes to the system. This is in uh, a Bruker Bioscope Catalyst AFM. It was purchased in around 2006 to 2007. Uh, the purchase cost was around $120,000. And as a reminder, AFM stands for Atomic Force Microscopy. There are other acronyms that are sometimes used, such as SPM or Scanning Probe Microscopy, but they're generally just referring to the same exact thing. A couple of things to notice initially is that our system is encased in a soundproof enclosure. So you can see the soundproof foam. There's doors on each side, which can be closed to fully encase the system. Another thing to notice is that the system is set upon a vibration isolation table. So this isolates the system from any vibrations that the building may be contributing so that they don't affect our measurements. AFM measures very, very, very small features on the order of nanometers, and therefore any vibrations may affect our measurements greatly. This system is unique in that it is mounted on an inverted fluorescence microscope. So you can actually do individual or combination measurements of fluorescence microscopy, which has its own CCD camera down on the bottom left of the microscope. The AFM imaging takes place above, so the fluorescence takes place below, and the AFM takes place on the top. The sample is mounted up here on this mounting plate. I have a blank glass slide with just a piece of tape on it as a display. And then the sample is clamped down with this magnetic holder. There are a couple different holders that can be used depending on the shape of the slide or what have you. Down on the right, we have our easy align system for lining up the laser and the cantilever. The tip will be mounted. I'm going to refocus this. The tip will be mounted here. So this tiny little piece is the tip holder. And it's mounted on this black disc just because it's so small that this helps us handle it without dropping it. So we'll go over tip mounting in the next video, but the tip will be mounted here. This is the cradle. Refocus again. This is the cradle that holds the tip. So we tilt it back and the tip holder is mounted here. Like so. It slides on and is held by a dovetail joint. And then we will use this camera down below to help align the laser and the tip. And then the cradle is placed over the top of your sample carefully. There are a couple different pegs. There are three different pegs underneath each corner, which go into tiny slots on the base plate and hold the cradle in place. 
There are two different cameras that you can use for imaging, one of them being the CCD for the fluorescence microscope, and the other being this camera here, which is on a track that swings over and looks down upon the sample from the top. So the camera looks down from the top over the sample and the tip at the same time, so you should be able to eventually see them both at the same time. We then have a computer monitor that's over inside the enclosure, which helps us align the sample and move the uh, tip up and down, as you'll see in the next video. And then we have some power supplies and light supply boxes so we can adjust the intensity of our light here uh, for the upper camera. Um, the instrument is operated just nearby from its own PC that's hooked up and we will actually be able to close the doors on the enclosure when we're ready to start imaging. Like so. Here are some of the supplies that we will use for today's imaging. I already showed you the black disc along with the tip holder that's mounted on it. The tip goes inside this tiny little slot here, and you'll be able to see it later. And the clip slides up and actually clips the tip for you and holds it in place. We are going to use these specific tweezers to for grabbing and moving the tips. And we use them for nothing else because they are uh, specialized tweezers. They're uh, static-free carbon fiber reinforced tweezers that are quite expensive. So we only try and use them for grabbing the tips and nothing else. And then we have our tips. So the tips usually come in a box similar to this. They can look slightly different, but these are specifically tapping mode tips made by Aspire. So the specifications are listed here. You can see there's a lot that goes into these tips. The, um, they even measure the spring force constant. They have the, resident, the approximate resonant frequency listed, the length and width of the cantilever, as, long as, as well as thickness. The reflex coating, so that is a coating that's on the back of the cantilever to allow the laser to have better reflection. And then it has the tip specification. So this is a conical tip. So there are uh, pyramidal tips as well. There's several different types of tips uh, with a height of 15 microns and the radius at the very end, nominally eight nanometers. So with these tips, eight nanometers is going to be the smallest feature that you can resolve. And maybe you can think about why that would be the case and we can talk about that later. And then these tips are specifically silicon nitride. There are just silicon tips as well. The silicon nitride tips are a bit harder and a bit better for a general tapping mode of, of hard materials. Um, we're gonna image two different things. One of them is a standard. So this is a, a X, Y, and Z standard. It's It has a, a grid of, of square pits. So the pits are square and have a depth of 180 nanometers and a pitch of 10 micrometers. So the pitch is the distance between one edge of a square to the same edge of the next square, okay? So we're gonna image this as an example. And then we're going to image a sample from one of our chemistry classes which is uh, silver nanoparticles just dried onto a slide. And then we will image that and see the shape and morphology of the silver on the surface. 